Hi everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Celtic View podcast where we look back on all the weekend's action and there's plenty of it and look ahead to the week to come for the football club. I'm Ryan Marr and as ever I'm joined by our Celtic View editor Paul Cuddehy. Paul, how did you enjoy that weekend? Come in and with a spring your step this week? I certainly did. It was, uh, it was very enjoyable, <laughs> it has to be said, from... From Saturday right through till Sunday, and of course uh, Sunday was Celtic's birthday, so 135 years old and yeah. uh, a great day for all. That was the only thing we were celebrating, isn't, wasn't it, on Sunday? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there is plenty to get into as normal as we, we look back in the, the first team's game. There was also action for the B team as well on the weekend and they got a big win and we also hear from Mikael Lustig, Paul, you sat down to chat to him, who is officially retired from football. So it's a, it's a really entertaining chat as he kind of looks back in his, his Celtic career. <laughs> Start off, Paul, with a, a moment of the weekend for you. Um, what, what springs to mind when you think back in that? Well, there's actually two moments. And the first one, I think, obviously, I think for a lot of us was Kyogo's goal. You know, we'd, we dominated that game on Saturday. The second half, we just absolutely battered them, but we couldn't get the, the third goal just to give us the cushion. Then they, they started to come into the game, they got the goal, three minutes to go, and you're thinking, are we going to drop points here? But this Celtic team, as, the, as they've shown this season, as they showed last season, they just keep going. I thought the brilliant flick on from Anthony Ralston, Kyogo does what Kyogo does best and scores the goal and the whole place erupted. That was coincided with... On the Sundays, I mentioned that it was the 135th anniversary of, of our founding, and Celtic FC Foundation always have, they have for the last 10 years, they have a mass at St Mary's along the Calton, Celtic's birthplace, on the November the 6th, just to, to celebrate our founding and our roots and where we came from in terms of the city and, and the faith and everything to do with it. It's always a brilliant Celtic celebration, and it just coincided perfectly. The mass started about 10 minutes after the game at Perth finished and I've, <laughs> I've never seen so many happy faces at mass in my life. <laughs> oh yeah, it should have been a, a, a would have been brilliant just to, to go there and see everybody's smiling faces going into that one. <laughs> um, I think for me a moment of the weekend, um, it kind of is with the Kyogo goal, but we put an image in our social media of the celebrations of the goal. And I think just that still image in itself was my moment of the weekend because you can just see like this team unity in one picture where everybody is just absolutely elated. And I think that's something that obviously has helped us in the last sort of 18 months under the manager that we've built that kind of that team ethos and that unity. And I think it just was all encapsulated in that one photo and that one moment as well. So... For me, that was my kind of moment of the, the weekend, but let's kind of get into the game in general. Obviously, Celtic defeating Dundee United 4-2 on Saturday. It was, how many times have we said it? You know, the team just, just don't know how to stop. They just never know when to give in. And again, it was just evident again Saturday. Yeah, and I think what it does is I think it sends a message to the rest of the teams in the league that it's not impossible, but it's very, very difficult to, to beat us. Obviously, it's not impossible because St Man showed that it, it can be done. But that's a couple of occasions now we sort of put McDermott Park where we look as if we're going to drop a couple of points, but we managed to get that one in goal. And it's different players that are just coming up at key moments. And it was a game that started off, I know you and I were talking beforehand, kind of half-joking us what would happen if we score a few early goals and the United starting to think, is it going to be nine again? And after Aksabanovic scored early on and we were just going forward and you started to think this this is going to be a, a really strong victory and then obviously VAR intervened uh, in a really bizarre way, gave the D United a, a kind of foothold and although we, we got our noses in front and as I say the second half was just a procession, we just didn't get that, that third goal and that always leaves you open to the maybe just the team just needs, the opposition needs one chance and, and they took it so it could have been uh, you know, we could have been looking at a completely different complexion come five o'clock on Saturday night. But the, you know, as I say, this team, whether it's the players that start, or whether the players that come on, you know, the very fact that the two players that scored goals three and four came off the bench and made that impact, and you see that so often that the the way the managers manage the squad in terms of you know we're always making we made seven changes 
to the team. It doesn't disrupt the way we play. We've spoken about it before because we're playing this certain style of football. They all know it. But the players that are coming on, immediately they want to try and make that impact. And that's a brilliant, that's a brilliant thing to have. And, it, it, you know, we showed it to great effect at the weekend. It must be so demoralising for other teams in the division at the moment because they are putting in their absolute maximum effort against us. You know, we saw it on Saturday with Dundee United, we saw it against St Johnston as well in Perth, we're scoring late goals and on most occasions you're thinking that's it, job done. But yet then we go again and then we score again and I, I know a boy that plays for Dundee United and he just texted me after it saying gutted, like they don't have any, any words for it because we just don't stop and that is going to have lasting impacts I think throughout this season when we go up against teams because they're probably going into the game already thinking like we need a miracle almost to, to beat Celtic and even when you do score late on then you, you have to be so switched on because we're just going to come again. I mean it would have been a travesty if we hadn't won that game because yeah. the D United, they, it was late on, they had the with the exception of the penalty, they did nothing in the first half. The second half, they had the, the chance where Joe Hart did well. Well, in fact, it was Greg Taylor cleared off the line from Middleton. They hit the post and then obviously they got the goal. But apart from that, they hadn't shown any attacking intent. And it was like every player was behind the ball about 20 yards from goal. So that, you know, obviously they would have been gutted because they thought they'd have stolen a point. That's what it would have been. It would have been daylight robbery. <laughs> um, going into kind of some of the individual performances in the match, Haksabanovic, obviously, he gets his first two goals for the club. Um, he was he was good again. Um, he really starts looks to be coming into his own as a Celtic player. Yeah, and I think what's interesting we we were talking about it, Tom Boyd and I in commentary is that he we've seen him playing on the left, we've seen him playing through the middle, and then now he's on the right. And I think when we signed him, the manager, I'm sure he made a point of you know bringing in players who are able to play more than one position because then that's great for 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 him in terms of. He knows he's got a player that can cover these different positions. I really liked him when I've, I've seen him play, and I think he, he's strong, he's direct, he's skillful. You know, he's going to create a lot of chances, but it was good to see him get a couple of goals. And you kind of just get that feeling now that I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes on a bit of a, a scoring spree. I know we've only got the two games before the break, but yeah, he's. I, I was really pleased that he got off the mark. And, um, you know, I think it was good to see him on the right, Jota. Just is just exceptional, you know. He was excellent again at the weekend. So um, it was th those th those two wide players were really really dangerous for us. And the fact that the manager, I think he's spoken about, you know, working between Yakimakis and Kyogo, and he almost kind of sees them as one striker together. And you know, one of them will play one game and then come off the bench. The next one make for the next game. The other one comes off the bench and kind of treating them as that kind of <laughs> that kind of one player. And what a, must be amazing for a manager to have these options where Yakimaka starts, Kyogo comes off the bench, scores a winning goal, and then Abada comes off the bench as well and scores. Just the options you have and you know that you can rely on so many different players, it must just be a dream. Yeah, and I think that's one of the other strengths we've got. The goals are coming from all over. That You look at all the players in those forward positions, they're all capable of scoring and, and they are all scoring. But that comes from the fact that we, we dominate the game, we're creating so many chances. I think one of the, the players I think that deserves a lot of credit, is particularly since Callum McGregor's getting injured, is Matt O'Reilly because you know we've seen him in a, a more forward position and I think as soon as we saw him playing those first couple of games last year, we're thinking, he's a player and, and you know he's he he's, must be on the verge of making it to the Danish national side. He's just exceptional. But I think just for him to drop back into that deeper role in the absence of like probably the key player in the team and to keep things going and you know, I saw his face in that picture you're talking about where he, he delivered the the corner in and he looked absolutely delighted. And I think he he's been one of the players one of the few players I think along with Hitati that's not really been part of the squad rotation just now and I think some that's partly circumstances. But I think he's really filled that role really well. And I thought on Saturday he kind of just, everything came through him and he just dictated it and, and I, I thought he was very impressive at the weekend. Particularly being so young as well and to have such an understanding of the game to go between, I know it's, it's not really a massive change in terms of positioning on the park, you're still kind of in the middle, but it's a completely different role and to have that kind of tactical understanding of where to be, the presence on the ball as well, I mean, I think that just really shows 
how good a player is when they can adapt to so many different roles. I think when he joined, I think you could tell he was an intelligent player and an intelligent person because when he joined in, in his explanation of, you know, why went to MK Dons, you know, he, it was all about wanting to develop as a footballer and the style of football and the, the type of teams that he wanted to play for. And he could have maybe gone elsewhere, but it didn't suit what he wanted to do. And then obviously he sees what's happening at Celtic under the manager and realises this is the place for him. So you can tell that he's he's thinking, you know, quite deeply about what the type of player he wants to be as, as much as anything else. And this has given him the perfect stage. And I think he's, as you say, he's still a really young player, but he, he's really, I think he's really thrived in this environment. One thing I noticed from our unique angle as well is that the corner that he does whip in, you're getting to the end of the match. If, for most teams, are probably going to be rushing things. He actually kind of takes a wee moment before he delivers that corner where he just kind of like has this big massive exhale, composes himself and then puts in a brilliant ball. And I think again, that just kind of speaks for the team in general. The fact that even when we're in those situations where we're pushing for a goal, it's not that you do anything different to try and get that goal and go and search for it. It's about doing the same things and keeping a calm head and trusting that process. And it's worked so many times. And it now puts us seven points clear at the top of the table. It's such an early stage, which is which is clearly brilliant. But I suppose what that does now is just put almost, maybe not extra significance, but for the next two games, it's really important that you kind of, you go into the, that winter break, sort of the World Cup break, keeping that seven point lead at least. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure the manager, you know, he's, the St Mern game that we, we touched on, that was our first domestic de defeat in a year in terms of the league. So that shows you the, the level of consistency that's been shown by the team and that's been required. So I'm sure that, that's just been drummed into the, the players as well, that, that that's a blip and they just want to get back to winning ways, which they've done. Now they can see the kind of end in sight for this first half of the season. Two games, third part, we've, we've played well against Motherwell this season, but it, you know, I'm, I'm, they'll be under no illusions that Motherwell certainly they, they lost it the weekend, so they'll be looking to try and bounce back. We get past that, and then we've got Ross County at home, and our, and our record at home, we've said it before, it's, it is a fortress under Ange Postacoglu. So you want to, you hope that you get the six points, as you say, be at least seven points clear at the top of the table, going into this break, you know, and then once we come back in the middle of December, it's going to be another hectic schedule of games. But it's a, it'd be a good position to go into, um, you know. Really, I think everybody will just be quite buoyant and then be looking forward to the return of domestic football. Yeah, so the two games this week, as you mentioned, we've got Murrowell away on Wednesday and then we have Ross County at home on Saturday. Um, looking at the game against Motherwell, what are your expectations for that one? We've played them already in the League Cup away from home this season and had quite a, a comfortable victory in that one. I think it's all about every game. I think it's all about what we do. I think if it, you know that I'm sure the manager will make changes again. And as I say, I don't know, but I just get that feeling as if he's almost looked that they've looked at the fixture list and and almost like not quite picked a team in advance because you can't legislate for injuries, etc. But he kind of knows so that every player's at the top of their game, but they're all getting the proper game time. So there probably will be changes. I think if we go and play the way we're going to play, then all other things being equal, which is kind of now going to be code for VAR, um, then I think we'll be fine. Um, I'm impressed we've managed to last the whole podcast so far without <laughs> we just kind of brushed over that uh, ludicrous uh, penalty at the weekend. But I, th I think, yeah, I think we must go into that game strong favourites to win. And, you know, if we, we will create chances, which we do in every game. We finish them and, you know, we should be fine. Motherwell have changed their manager since the start of the season. They've got Stephen Hamill in charge, who was a manager when they played them in the League Cup game. They seemed, a lot of people were talking about the fact they've improved quite a lot, but results-wise, it's not really been a, a vast improvement under Stephen Hamill. Maybe performance-wise, I've not seen too much of them. They'll obviously be disappointed at the weekend. Hearts were down to 10 men. They got the game back to two each after Hearts went 2-0 up, and then to lose the game as well must be a, a bit of a signal for them. Um, clearly have some threats, you know, I think we've spoken before about Kevin Van Veen, he's got a brilliant goal actually that was ruled out for, for offside against Hearts, but as you mentioned, as long as we kind of turn up and, and do our job, then we should be fine. 
Yeah, I mean, as you say, Van Veen's the main kind of goal threat. A young guy, McKinstry, has come through this season. He's scored a couple of good goals and he looks a decent player as well. But I think it will be, I think they'll know that, that it will be kind of backs to the wall for them and, and they'll have to hope that, you kind of, I think, I'm presuming that teams facing Celtic must be hoping that at least about seven of the players have an off night and then you've got half a chance. But, you know, because we're able to freshen the squad up and every player that's coming in is desperate to show how, how good they are and how, well, we know they're good, but how, how much they deserve to be in the team. There's a freshness of every game about this Celtic team. So, um, you know, I think we go into the games looking forward to them, expecting to win and, and you know, looking forward to enjoying the football that we're playing just now, which I think, you know, shouldn't be underestimated as well. I think Celtic fans are just loving what they're seeing. I know, and then on Saturday it's Ross County at Celtic Park. It's, it's going to be strange. You have a game in mid-November and then you don't have another one for a month. I've still not really got my head around it. I was, I was hearing some fans down in the Premier League in England saying that that was the, their last home game there at the weekend for, for some teams and they're saying to people like Merry Christmas and things, you know, I'll see, or I'll see you in the new year, which is just madness, you know. Um, yeah, I think the English League's starting later. I think partly because the, maybe there's an, the anticipation that England will, you know, progress quite far in the, the World Cup tournament, so therefore quite a lot of their players won't be coming back. So obviously Scotland don't have that, that <laughs> problem to, to deal with. I mean, who knows though, you could have a... Japan Croatia final, and then we're missing players for the first games back. So. Divided loyalties in that one. <laughs> I know. But then again, that game against Ross County, similar to what we've spoken about in terms of us kind of just turning up and, and doing our job. We've not had any real dangers against Ross County um, since Andrew's come in as manager at home anyway. I think we beat them 3 0 last season and then 4 0 as well. Um, Ross County, they, they got a win at the weekend against. St Mirren, but things haven't been going as smoothly so far this season for them. What what do you make of, of them and kind of their potential threats? It's kind of kind of feels somewhat similar to last season because they they had a really Subject, bad yeah. start, but then they kind of settled down and actually turned out to be, you know, had a decent season, but very difficult to beat. And I think that's that's the thing about them that they they obviously you know that was a good victory for them at the weekend because they were, they were losing 2-1 at home against a, a decent St Mirren side and they actually end up winning the game you kind of I, I always wonder you know it's the la- you know as you said it's the last game for them as well as us before this break you know there's no expectations on them to win I, I, I never quite understand why maybe not going toe to toe why don't you just come and have a go because if you just sit in you're going to lose because that's that's what history tells you that's what the, the results tell you so why not, you know, go and, you know, come and have a go and, and maybe try and upset the rhythm of Celtic? I mean, I, we're going to win. I think we're going to win that game because, you know, as you, just, you mentioned earlier on, you want to finish off on a high, send the supporters home happy, maintain, at least maintain this lead at the top of the table. I know it, it might put extra pressure on, on teams elsewhere if we get these two wins as well. So you never know what the, the lead could be come this time next week. I know, I think if, if I were a fan of a, a team coming to Celtic Park, and I think we are speaking about it last week, almost a bit like in the, the Champions League game against Real Madrid away from home last week, it's almost like we're going into that game, maybe how a lot of teams in Scotland come to Celtic Park, and you know, obviously it wasn't the best result, getting beat 5-1, but we went and had a go, and there's so many positives you can take from that, and who knows, you scored a penalty, it could be a different game, all those different aspects to it, so you'd much rather go and, and have a go at teams. Well, I remember there was a there was a period, I think Inverness Cali Thistle under John Hughes, um, who I always felt was quite an underrated manager, they would come and have a go. I mean, again, maybe the results didn't bear out, but at least they came and had a go and, and you know, made a game of it. Hibs for a while as well, you know, even under Neil Lennon, yeah. would come and actually and got some points as well because they came and tried to play their football. Knowing that if you go toe-to-toe with Celtic, it's very difficult, but you know, to your point, it was interesting. There was a there was a column at the weekend in one of the newspapers from a, a Scottish journalist that was kind of having a wee pop at Celtic fans for the way in which the Celtic fans at the end of the game in, in the Bernabeu had been singing and greeting the, the the team and you know praising the team. And I thought, well, there was two things. One, a he wasn't a Celtic fan, and B, I'm not even sure if he was a football fan because he didn't get it because you know. There's, you obviously want your team to win, but you're you're also there to support the team. You know we have this reputation 
and, and again, he'd be the first person to probably praise the Tartan Army for doing the same thing. But, you know, the Celtic fans there had seen a Celtic team come into the Bernabeu against the European Championships and having a go and creating some really good chances and trying to play their football. And I think there was an appreciation of that. And I thought it was quite a strange... Um, it was quite a strange article to have a go. And I, I thought, I'm not really sure if you get... Maybe you've just been away from being a football fan for too long. You get what it means to be a football fan and see a team playing like that against you know a top side. Obviously, everybody's disappointed that you lose, but there's some ways... You know, there's certain ways in which you lose, and that Celtic team certainly gave everything that night. Yeah, and you go on these trips as well to enjoy yourself as much as you can. You don't go to be doer, and you know, obviously, the result a lot of time can dictate, you know, how you feel after the game when you're going on these these types of trips. But you're in Madrid at the Bernabeu. You've saw Celtic. You've watched Celtic put in a good performance, have chances. You scored a goal late on as well, which kind of helps that. You're ambassadors for the club, mm-hmm. and. I suppose arguably for the country as well and there's a reason why you know our fans have a, such a great reputation and, and why as a club we have a, such a great reputation it's because our fans go they support the club positively and you know kind of they're, they're made to feel welcome because they behave themselves when they go there so that for me it's a, that, that's such a positive but I don't know if it's part of a wider narrative that to try and you know avoid focus elsewhere on on you know European records that, uh, you know, an unenviable European record that was set. So Yeah, but also being in the grounds at the game, there was there was a lot of Celtic fans, clearly far more Madrid fans, but, you know, when the Champions League anthem goes off, like we do at Celtic Park and everyone's going crazy, and you could see all the Madrid fans around about us, they were like, what is going on? And then again, when we scored a goal with Jota at the end and just kind of those sort of full-time you wouldn't really call them celebrations, but just people kind of sort of singing at the final whistle. They're looking around going like, this is amazing, like what a football club this is and what a set of supporters. Yeah, so it goes to your point. Um, moving on, Paul, you had the chance to sit down and speak with Mikhail Lustig, who this weekend played his last game on professional football. Um, you sp- sat down to speak to him though for the, for the Celtic View, which is going to be coming out very soon, where you can read the, the full interview with Mikael. But how did you enjoy the chat? Yeah, it was it was really nice to, to speak to him. He was always a good guy when he was here. Um, certainly in terms of anything that we ever wanted to do, and you know, with the Celtic view over the years, I think he was always great. Um, always happy to speak to us. You know, win, lose or draw, which I think always it's like you know, obviously not, you and I have not played football at that level. But after a, a poor result, the last thing that players want to do. Is, is come and do any media duties, but he was always great in, in terms of doing that. He always, I, I think, had an appreciation of that we had a job to do still. Um, but he was, you know, I thought he was great for us over the seven and a half years. I thought, you know, first and foremost as a player, but then he kind of embraced what Celtic was about. You know, some of his celebrations were brilliant. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously all these things come to an end, and I think he decided that, you know, it was time for him to this phase of his of his life. So that was at the weekend he, he played his last game. So it was it was nice just to for him to reflect on I suppose the seven and a half years he was here would have been the you know, I think he was twenty four or twenty five when he came. So that was the be the prime of his his playing career, you know, obviously capped nearly a hundred times for Sweden as well. So he's got a lot of fond memories of Celtic, just in the same way as a lot fans have a lot of fond memories of him. Yeah, so many memories to look back on and for, for Mikhail Lustig to, to remember from his time at Celtic. So let's hear from the former right back now.
Mika, it's great to see you, great to have you on the Celtic View podcast. We're actually talking here just a few days before, I suppose, an emotional day for you, your final game as a professional footballer. How are you feeling in the run-up to the game? Uh, to be fair, it's been quite normal, uh, I would say. Uh, it's been a, a lot of lost things. Uh, now in the weekend, we have the last away trip and the last away game, uh, but it's been quite okay uh, so far, but... I think, yeah, the game on Sunday probably gonna uh, hit me big time, uh, and then gonna be sentimental, and uh, you know have a have a small party after that as well. So uh, yeah, uh, Sunday is gonna be, be special, uh, I would imagine. And a, and a few tears maybe as well. Yeah, uh, I'm always been a crier, so yeah, it, it's gonna be a, a couple of them. I mean, do you think it's for yourself when you think back? You know, it's it's an extraordinary career I've had. You, you you know, you've been lucky enough to have a long career, a long varied career for club and country. But now it's come to that point that you know you're hanging up your boots. Was that was that a difficult decision for you to make? It's always a tough decision, but uh, I felt it quite uh, a long time now. Uh, I'm always been a a player that want to give hundred percent, and when I feel like. I'm not going to be able to be there every training. Uh, I feel it's it's better to to quit uh, when you you still uh, feel like you're a, a decent footballer, uh, if that makes any sense. So uh, uh, I just felt like it's it's the the perfect timing uh, to do that. And uh, obviously, I, I still love football and uh, probably still going to be involved in in somehow. So uh, still looking forward to to the next career so but uh, yeah yeah it's it, it's been a it's been a long ride and uh, it's been um, so much fun is that one of those uh, times where you obviously get to spend more time with the family now until the point they say right get back out and start doing some work we've had enough of you yeah uh, of course uh, but I think like a footballer it's it's a lot of talk that they just want to quit too, so they can spend more time with the family because as a footballer you have a lot of time with them as well so but uh, obviously you have you have missed a lot of things uh, a lot of parties a lot of uh, weddings and uh, still uh, things like that and when you get older you, you feel a little bit more that uh, you want to be involved in those kind of things so uh, absolutely the, it's going to be it's gonna be good uh, to to be there hundred uh, percent for 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 my kids, uh, absolutely. And is it fair to say we obviously had you here for about seven years? You know, when you came here, they, were we lucky as as fans and as a club to get you in the kind of the prime of your career to get those, I suppose, the, the best years of, of your career that we were lucky enough to see? Um, yeah. Uh... I would say some of the years absolutely was was, was brilliant for me. Uh, I think I might would be able to to come a little bit earlier as well. I came when I was like 24, 25. So, but I mean to to be in Celtic for for eight season uh, in such a big club and uh, a team always want to win and want to to play in Europe. Uh, I'm I'm really I'm really happy and uh, really really proud of, of that. So uh, yeah, uh, a couple of years was. I felt really good. Uh, some of the years was a little bit up and down. So, but uh, yeah, most of my time there was was unbelievable. I suppose I'm guessing when you join any new club, you obviously just want to make your mark. And I'm guessing when you join Celtic, you could you have envisaged how things turned out? You know the success you had. Obviously, as you said along the way, there's highs and lows. You know things like injuries, etc. But you know to stay at a club like Celtic for so long. You know, there's not that many players that get to stay for that length of time. You have to be at a certain standard all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I remember when I came, I had a little bit of a rocky start uh, with injuries and didn't play a lot the the first uh, six months. But uh, yeah, then it was just kicking on. And like you said, uh, to, to, to stay in a club like Celtic for so long, uh, that means that they're happy with you. And, uh, you know, obviously I had... Uh, yeah, some other offers uh, I could have left uh, a couple of times, but I always been true to myself, and you know I would never play for a big club uh, like Celtic. So for me, it's it's always just try to try to stay fit, try to be a a, a decent footballer uh, as a long time. Then uh, I'm probably gonna have a a couple of years in in, in Celtic.
Yeah, I think describing yourself as a decent footballer is maybe a wee bit modest, I think. But I always wonder as well, you know, the fans took you to, to their hearts. We remember some great moments, some great celebrations. But again, I still think the reason fans love you is because of what you did on the park throughout that period of time. Because that's, that's how we judge players for what they do for the club. And that must please you as well, the way that the fans still think of you. Yeah, of course. I mean, especially when when I left the club, I I felt so much love. Uh, I felt love when I when I played there as well. But uh, you know, it's it's a it's a special club to be at, and uh, I'll be fortunate to to play with a lot of good players and a lot of good managers during my time at Celtic. And uh, because I'm always been a player, I'm, I'm maybe not the the best talent, uh, the one, but. When I have good players around me, I'm 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 quite happy to to help them to be better players as well, and uh, you know to to be in 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 a team with so much uh, talent. It's been it's been amazing for me. And you know, given the fact you were here for so long, as you mentioned, some some of the players, you know, back in that that first squad you have, obviously Scott Brown was there. The, the entire team you were there is are those. They're more than just teammates, I'm guessing. They they become friends because you've spent so much time and achieved so much alongside them. Absolutely, and uh, that's uh, another special thing because in Celtic, we're uh, a lot of players who's been there for for uh, a long time, and uh, often uh, you see players be there for three years and then they move on. But uh, to be there with yeah, with Bruni, with uh, Jamesy, Tom Rodjick, Nero. Uh, yeah, KT, you can name a lot of players, uh, Callum as well. So to be there for, for eight seasons with them and, you know, see see how we get better as a team. And even when we're not playing that good, we, you always grow together. And uh, like you said, it's it's been more like um, having a, a teammate. It's, it's been really... Really good friends as well. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, a really good thing uh, for me to have. I mean, in terms of, obviously, I think you mentioned it already, at Celtic, you have to win every single game. You know, a draw is never an acceptable result. Did that take a wee bit of adjustment? Or is that something, again, is that something that you just thrived on? You thought, this is the environment that I want to play because yeah. you know, nothing's acceptable except a win? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a lot of times that you're sitting in the dressing room and you're fuming uh, for the because the the support has been been on you that game. But I always said, if if it weren't for the for the supporters, Celtic wouldn't have won so much trophies uh, and be a top team in in uh, in Europe. So I think you you need that and you need to learn as a player quick how how, how the club works. Uh, like I said, I remember. Uh, the first couple of years, you were sitting there and you you think the support is just moaning all the time and they're not happy with a draw. And when we win, it's just it's more like just a relief. But to be able to to stay on the top, you you need support supporters uh, like that. And uh, yeah, that's why we we are really good. Uh, I'm talking now as a fan and, and seeing that you scoring those goals in those games. And I think it's fair to say you enjoyed scoring them probably a lot more than you enjoyed watching them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, scoring goals is uh, not that often uh, when you went, when you're a defender, but uh, to to do that and to do that in in, in big games, it's uh, it's amazing. And uh, I mean, especially now when you, when it's soon over, you you always uh, got a few video clips to to look back on, and uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna live with me forever. Yeah, because people remember some of those iconic goals and iconic goal celebrations as well. And, I'm guessing, you know, obviously the, the one where you, you, you wear the policeman's hat, but those are just the, the emotion of that, that day and that moment just takes over. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't don't think Celtic uh, supporter know who, who scored that goal, but it's actually James Forrest. And uh, I told him after that I always steal his, his uh, thunder. So, uh, but uh, like a defender, if you can't score a goal, you just do something that the sport is going to uh, recognise you. So, yeah, I'm happy with that one. Yeah, I mean, I think it was um, 21 goals and 276 appearances for Celtic. Uh, I think 16 trophies as well, which is a pretty impressive record just for here alone. And again, I've spoke to players over the years because you're, you're always in the moment, you're always looking ahead. 
is this going to be the time now where you can actually look back properly and say, you know what, I actually achieved, you know, a lot in my career? Yeah, I think so. I mean, when you when you're active as a player, you you're so focused on the next game or the uh, the next opportunity to win a trophy. But uh, I felt it a little bit when I when I went to to Belgium after Celtic. You know, then you start to realize what you have uh, achieved in in uh, in that club and how much the club really uh, mean for you. So. Uh, I think I've processed that a little bit more than just uh, to see the bigger picture like it's going to be now after Sunday. Then it's going to be a, a whole career that you, you, you're you going to look back at. So uh, it's going to be special, but uh, I'm I'm so happy that I have a lot of memories uh, to look back on. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of uh, uh, what I achieved. Do you take all the, the success that you had here at Celtic just as a whole or are there any particular... Cup finals, for example, or, or league titles in particular that, that stand out for you as, as particular favourites? It's difficult. I mean, uh, I think every trophy got a different story, but uh, if I need to pick up something, I think that the first treble, treble that we won uh, was, was something special because it hasn't been done for such a long time. And uh, when we won it, that the first trouble you thought that yeah, we, we're not going to be able to do it, that, that again but then we won was a four year in a row we won the, the treble so uh, but the first one was was amazing and uh, but I think I always been said that my my seven and a half years at the club is just one big highlight and uh, you know it's was a was a really good time yeah that was one of the things I was going to ask you hopefully we get to see you back at Celtic Park because I mean, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure every Celtic fan would, you know, would love to see you, you back out there just to even, you know, say hello. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, uh, I didn't got the time to to, to say goodbye. Uh, I knew when I when I played my last game, but the supporter didn't knew that. But uh, of course, uh, since the, the the day I left, uh, I just wanna want want to come back. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully soon. Uh, if not this year, I'm going to be there early, early next year. Yeah, I suppose, I mean, I'm guessing knowing that you're playing your last game for the club was difficult, but at the same time, it, it was a big game for you to, to bow out. We went, we ended up winning another, another treble. You you end up setting up the winning goal as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, the, the last couple of weeks were, were crazy. Uh, so... Uh, it was quite difficult to to focus on, on that game, and uh, I think I hit cramp like in the in the fiftieth minute. So it was it was it was a really special game, and uh, I'm, I mean, especially when they take the lead one nil, it, it wasn't supposed to end like that. But you know, I'm I'm happy that Odson, uh, you know, stepped forward and and, and scored two goals, and uh, yeah, to to finish my my Celtic career with a, with a treble treble. I mean. Couldn't be better. So uh, you know, uh, after all, it, it, it ended ended up perfect. So I'm I'm really happy with that. And obviously, again, I'm, I, I'm speaking just as a fan of how much we enjoyed, um, you know, you playing for us. How how much did you enjoy playing here in terms of that that relationship you had with the fans over the years? I mean, of course, the the supporters are. are always making the, the the size of the club uh, and for me it's always been important to have a good uh, bond with, with the supporters and it doesn't matter if you play bad or or you or, or you play really good you always need to respect the the supporters and uh, yeah from day one you know obviously the supporters are, are top in in Europe and in the world the the my my football wasn't always top of Europe and the world, but I always give hundred percent for for the badge and the the, the colors. So uh, if I look back, you know, I'm I'm really happy, and uh, I I think the supporters uh, really really felt that as well. Yeah, you can read that full interview in the Celtic View Christmas edition, which we are working away on at the moment, Paul. It's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a really good magazine, I think. There's gonna be lots of lots of great content in it and interviews and 
a few weeks away from that coming out. Yeah, as we as we always say, it's going to be a Christmas cracker. It it's actually out on the the twenty fourth of November, so yeah. it'll be available from then. So over the next week or two, we'll start to to let people know uh, the kind of features that are going to be in it. Obviously, Mikel Lustig's there. We're going to be speaking to some of the first team players, some other Celtic celebrities, um, you know, Celtic supporting celebrities as well. Some amazing competition prizes, which we always have at this time of the year, courtesy of of the club sponsors as well. So there's there's plenty for people. It's a it's a perfect stocking filler actually. <laughs> And we'll be saying that every week for the next six or seven weeks. <laughs> but, you yeah, know, um, definitely keep an eye out on our uh, social media page at Celtic View on Twitter because we'll be putting out a, a lot of content there as well and you can kind of keep up to date with dates and all that type of thing as well. Um, Paul, over the weekend, the B team were also in action against Open Goal Room Hill. We spoke at length about that game last week. Obviously, it's a... The team that Simon Ferry has, has taken charge of with, with Paul Slane and all the sort of the media access that, that they've been putting out on YouTube and there's been a lot of noise about the team so far this season and Celtic went and beat them six two. I think it's you know, I think it's one of the I think it's one of the most impressive results for the Celtic B team this season for a number of reasons. First they came back off off the back of a really tough game in midweek in the the youth league against Real Madrid, so they're having to, you know, cope with the the, the disappointment of a, a defeat in Europe, the travelling back and then not having a lot of time to prepare for the game at the weekend. So that is one challenge and that's obviously that's the challenge that they're going to face if they progress to the first team because that's just part and parcel of being Celtic players. Then as you say they've got we spoke about the I suppose the kinda the, the kind of media circus that surrounds open goal Br- Broomhill. Although I, that's been slightly disingenuous because I think they've actually done well as a football team this this season. You know, they're up near the top end of the Lowland League. They're in the third round of the Scottish Cup. So they've actually put together a decent football team. But I think to to go in, you know, home game, but to win that game 6-2 and emphatically win that game, I think it says everything about, you know, the way that the team had been prepared, the way they went into that game. And I'm sure it was drummed into them by the coaches that they had to they had to have the right attitude from, from the word go and they, they obviously did. And probably one of the most interesting things when you look at post match, open goal are quite, you know, good in terms of putting out post match stuff, post match interviews. There was kinda media silence afterwards. So I don't know if it kinda maybe knocked them a wee bit, the fact that we're maybe thinking they could come and get a result against Celtic, which would have been a big result. But I think the you know the, the Celtic team on the day you know, performed really, really well and, and that's a, that is an impressive victory actually. Yeah, I'm sure it would be quite a bruising one for them but more importantly, a, a really emphatic and important one for Celtic as you mentioned coming back off the, the Youth League defeat midweek and to go out and put a performance like that, I'm sure for, for Darren and for Steve McManus that will fill them with so much pride that the, the team have that ability to bounce back like that and do it so emphatically. A um, couple of really uh, good individual performances as well. Rocco Vata scoring a hat-trick. He's someone that's that's really impressed this season. He was in pre-season as well and um, scored his, his first goal in Green White Hoops on, on that trip. Um, but he seems to be someone that's doing really well this season. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think you know he's he's caught the eye. I think he's also caught the eye when he's played for, for the island side as well. And but I think it's it's a it's that team performance, and you know there is an element of you, you have to get into that habit of winning as a Celtic player. But you know I've heard it so many times this season from Darren D and Steve McManus about the development of of what they're learning because they're trying to mirror what the first team are doing in all aspects of what they do in terms of training and playing. So they would have been pleased just to see because I suppose that's a test for them to see what's the mentality, what's the attitude of the players going into this game, are they able to just quickly put aside what happened in midweek and focus on the game in hand and, and obviously they, they absolutely did that to, to great effect and you know it would have been great to be sitting here if we'd just won 1-0 or 2-1 but it was an emphatic win which you know was thoroughly merited in terms of the performance that we put on. Yeah that will only boost our confidence and in terms of the Lowland League at the moment they're currently ninth in the table however they still have three games in hand and on most teams, uh, they're nine points off the top um, and they've got two games in hand on the, the team 
in first place as well. And then coming up this week, they also have two games. Um, East Stirlingshire and Edinburgh Uni, both away from home Wednesday and Saturday. Both of those teams are kind of languishing at the bottom end of the table. I think they're like third bottom and second bottom, uh, respectively. So it's a really good opportunity on the back of such a great win to try and go and, and get another kind of couple of good performances and results to kind of keep pushing them up the table. And again, I, I think the coaches will be looking to see, because there, there will have been an element of, it, it would have been a big game at the weekend because the players would have been aware of, you know, Open Groom, Gold Broom Hills media presence and the fact of this flying the wall documentary of, of the season. So there is a presence. So there'd been a big game for them, I suppose, to, to get up for. But these two games, again, are coming in quick succession. They're both away from home against sides that I'm sure they, their players will be you know, up for the game to try and, you know, get a good result against Celtic. So I think that will be the important thing, just to, to remain focused in each game. You know, we might go into these games as favourites in terms of league positions, but you still have to win the game. So um, it'll be interesting to see those two games. But I'm sure on the back of, of that victory at the weekend, the confidence will be really high. Mm -hmm. And just a, a word on the women's team, we have not forgotten about them. They're just not playing this weekend. They're at international duty and I don't think they've got a game until in the 20th of November, so a bit of a, a break for them. Uh, right now, Paul, as we end the podcast, we do it every week, is on our predictions game. Uh, we go up against each other, uh, we get a supporter on and to represent the fans as well. So last week we had seven games, you got two correct results. Uh, the fans, Scott, got three correct results and I got four correct results. So... Still sitting bottom, however, starting to creep up a little bit. So I don't know if you're getting nervous at all. I don't know if that was just an initial burst of, of luck I had and it's uh, starting to tail off. <laughs> well, another week of seven games and uh, yeah, hopefully I can kind of keep chipping away because at the moment you are in 26 and the fans are on 21 and I'm in 19. So I'm still seven behind, um, but I could, I could maybe I'll change this time next week. So we will see. Um, so this week we've got Callum Ross on to represent the fans and we will start off the predictions with Celtic away to Motherwell on Wednesday. Well, not surprisingly, I'm going to go for a Celtic win. I'm going to go for 4-1. I think, um, you know, we are very strong at the moment. We create lots of chances. We score goals. Um, I think Motherwell might just nick one, but yeah, a strong 4-1 win for Celtic. Callum has went for 3-1 to Celtic. I also had 4-1, but I'm going to change that just so we're different and I'll go for 4-0 to Celtic. Um, You'll be raging if... if, if well, you will be raging if Motherwell was going anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But see if it's sitting at 4-0 and you'll be sitting there thinking, last minute, one mother will get a goal. That's terrible. No. Um, <laughs> another game on Wednesday night in the Scottish Premiership. Livingston at home to... Aberdeen. That's an. I mean, I think Livingston at home, the it's a different proposition as we know ourselves. Aberdeen had a on paper really good victory against Hibernian on Friday night. There's absolutely no doubt that VAR played a, a pivotal role in that. Quite bizarre uh, VAR decision, and uh, not the only one at the weekend. I think Livingston are going to win that game two one actually. Okay. Yeah. Callum has also went for two one. Uh, I'm going for one each, but I was thinking more Livingston than Aberdeen. I don't think they've been great away from home Aberdeen either so far this season. And Livingston at home are also so strong, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for a one each draw. Sit in the fence. Um, then going into the weekend, the first teams game Celtic at home to Ross County. I'm gonna go Celtic five 0 Five 0 nice. Uh, Callum's four 0 and I'm going three 0 as well. So. Um, yeah, I'll take any of those scores, but I'll take yours more than anything else. Um, also, for then looking at the B team, B team game against Edinburgh Uni away from home. Again, I'll go for a Celtic win. I'd go for four two actually. Okay. I think yeah, they'll, they'll win the game, but I think it'll you know especially with a midweek game, I think it'll be it'll be a wee bit tough. But four two. Yeah, um, it's interesting with the university teams. I know Edinburgh aren't doing great at the moment, but. 
Celtic obviously they get to train full time, but for most of the teams in the league they don't get that opportunity. But then with the university teams, they are kind of training four, four to five times a week. So I think um, in previous games, even though the quality is not there, the fitness levels are always there in these teams, which kind of can go a long way. Um, I'm going for two 0 in that one for Celtic, and Cam's going for three 0 for Celtic. Um, three games left. So take a couple from our Premiership and one from down south. Um, go for Aberdeen again playing Dundee United. Picked that one because Dundee United obviously got a really big win against Aberdeen, 4-0, I think it was, um, at Tanadice in the last game. So Aberdeen looking for revenge, but could Dundee United get a result? I'm going to, I'm going to sit on the fence with this one and say two each. I thought Dundee United are a couple of good players. I thought McGrath, who's on loan from Wigan, I, think, I was quite impressed with him at the weekend. I thought he had a lot of nice touches, but... It's, it's always difficult to judge a team against us because we pin them back so much, but I'm going to go for two each in that game. Yeah, uh, Callum has went for 2-0 Aberdeen and I'm going to go for 3-1 Aberdeen. Um, they seem to have kind of picked up a bit of form at home anyway, but again, the, the game against Hibs, as you said, maybe not a great indicator because all the VAR nonsense that came with it. Um, <laughs> and Hibs were probably the better team in that first half before the penalty. Um Keeping with Hibs, their trip away to Kilmarnock at the weekend. Yeah, I mean, I th Hibs are, are kind of one of those... I think they'll be there and thereabouts for third or fourth. I think they'll go on a run of maybe three or four games and then they'll lose some games where you're expecting them to win. And again, the, the Kilmarnock pitch has to play a part in that. Um, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for two each again, actually. OK. Uh, Callum's went for 1-0 Hibs and I'm going for 2-0 Kilmarnock. Um... They've, again, been better at home than away, as probably most teams are. They'll be disappointed to have lost 3-2 to Livingston, but um, I suppose that's one game where the opposition going to Rugby Park, it's not that big of a deal playing an artificial exactly. pitch, so a bit of a, a leveller for both sides. Um, but yeah, I think Hibs away from home haven't been great. I thought, I watched the game against Aberdeen, they were the better team in the first half, but then as soon as Aberdeen scored, they kind of crumbled a little bit and it was the same when they, when they played here against us. We were brilliant on that day though and beat them 6-1. So going for Kilmarnock. And then finally, um, in the English Premiership of the weekend, Newcastle against Chelsea. High-flying Newcastle. High-flying Newcastle and struggling Chelsea. I think it will be 3-1 to Newcastle. I think it's interesting. I think, I think Graham Potter was an interesting appointment for Chelsea and he'd done well at Brighton, but... I was thinking at the weekend when I was watching them playing against Arsenal, it's different when you're playing for Brighton, there's no expectations, so anything you do, and you do it well, but you are not got the scrutiny that you have at Chelsea where they're expected to be top four and challenging at the top of the table, and they just haven't, there's been a few games where they just haven't got it quite right yet, they're still, they're still not quite playing the way he wants them to play, and as you say, Newcastle at the moment, I've watched a couple of their games, and they are so impressive in terms of the football they're playing and then at home especially so 3-1 uh, yeah I've also went for 3-1 but I'm going to stick with it this time uh, and Callum has went for a 2-1 win for Chelsea but yeah Newcastle Newcastle are doing brilliant at the moment their turnaround has been sensational and getting performances out of players like Almiron who I think he was like a meme for ages that he didn't score for like 30 odd games or something and people would post every day saying like another day that Almiron's still not scored and now he can't stop scoring so uh, so yeah I'm going for, for Newcastle in that one and hopefully that's seven games where I can claw back those seven points this time next week well you know how you know how hard it is to get a seven point uh, deficit well. not back, so <laughs> don't, don't be getting any false hopes <laughs> The pressure is on me at the moment. Maybe this time next week I won't be sitting here. <laughs> um, but yeah, but, uh, yeah so hopefully uh, yeah, I can I can claw that back and we, yeah, we can be back on top this time next week. But yeah, for now, thanks very much for joining us and hopefully we'll have another couple of results to look back on in terms of positively for Celtic next week and do join us again then. Cheers for now. <laughs>